I want to welcome everybody to a, another podcast with Conversations with Cleo. And today you're going to be in for a, a wonderful delight. I want you to meet, I think, one of the most impactful individuals that I have in my network. And by the way, I believe that your net worth is equal to your network. And I'm very, very honored to have today with us Wes Okeke. Wes is the CEO and founder of Cubio, as well as Headway, Headway Idea Labs. And, and Wes, welcome to Conversations with Cleo podcast, brother. Thank you, Cleo. Uh, as I as I said earlier, this is a uh, is an honor to be a, on your podcast, but also it's an honor to know you as well. Well, you humble me, my brother. Listen, this is uh, folks. As you know, this podcast is really centrally focused on bringing you, and I like to just put it plain and simple, not only straight talk, but ordinary people doing extraordinary things. And the reason why Wes is here with us today, Wes has an extraordinary background, but yet his path and not just getting to him, getting him where he needs to be and where he is today with helping startups, not only in the Houston area, but global, I think you should understand and know. And, and so stay tuned because there's going to be lots of gems that are going to come through this conversation. So Wes, if you could just share with the audience a little bit about you, your background, and and some of the things that have driven you in this area. Sure, uh, Cleo, and, and I'll do my best to keep this as short as possible. But um, originally from Nigeria, West Africa, and um, love technology. So I've always been very passionate uh, in, in tech. At an early age, eight, nine years old, I'm taking things apart. I'm working with electricity. I'm causing electrical fires. My dad is going nuts <laughs> at the house. Um, and, and my mom's from the U.S., so we used to fly back and forth. But I, at, at, a, at a young age, I always had a, a passion for tech, but then also a passion for people. So uh, growing up in Nigeria, obviously, we just I saw a lot of people in poverty, and that always uh, I always had a, 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 a I was always conscious stricken about why them and why am I where am I where I'm at and and I grew up in a in a um, well to do household um, traveled to the U S uh, every year because my mom's parents but then I eventually went to school uh, in in uh, Indiana private school and then went to Boston. Um, where I finished college and and then on to my career, and um, that that's there's a lot of deep stories there, uh, <laughs> but the one that I guess it impacts me the most uh, through everything, and just so people know that you know life never goes as you had planned, but I'm forty so I was forty something thirty something years old, and I'm finishing college because I stopped and mm -hmm. went into real estate, had a real estate company at twenty years old, and so on and so forth, but. I'm 43 years old and I'm going back to Nigeria to our village now, to the cities I'd been to, but to the village I hadn't been to in 25 years. And I'm there and I'm realizing mm -hmm. technology is, is becoming apparent in our village. And the last time I was there, I think I was roughly around 14 and now I'm 43 and uh, something like that. Maybe the numbers aren't totally correct. But anyway, it was 40 something, it was 20 something years. And, uh, and and I was really excited because I'm like, oh, my gosh, technology in our village. And uh, I was there for three nights, and I realized uh, electricity and clean water and um, educational and medical resources hadn't changed. And I was, I was again, conscious stricken. And my dad, who's also an engineer, and they got tons of engineers and doctors out of our village. And, and I asked him, I said, why, with all the engineers, why is, are we still in this state? And um, and uh, and his answer wasn't the the greatest, and uh, it wasn't suffice. I would say <laughs> it wasn't a bad answer. It just wasn't. I suffice. understand, right? But um, it 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 drove me to change my whole perspective on purpose. And so this this um, sorry, I'm going to use this word. This lust for technology changed into a purpose for technology and more right. legacy. And that's where um, everything began to to change in my life, and and uh, and now I'm here. But you know, there's a lot more to it. But then that's why I'm here um, right now. And I'm I'm looking to leave legacy more than um, leave uh, you know a name for myself as much as I want to leave legacy and change for people. 
Wes, that's fantastic. You've definitely in your life's journey have found your why. And we're going to get into this, this idea of purpose. I, I you and I collaborate. Uh, we are involved uh, with, a, with uh, several startups in, in the courts uh, trying to model exactly how do you place your purpose in action. And one of the things that I want you to share is you really are, I would call a purpose advocate evangelist, <laughs> without <laughs> question. Uh, purpose really is the fuel that will that makes things matter for you and your business, but the community you serve, as well as the employees that populate and bring your business to, to fruition. But share with us why it's important for a startup specifically, and also businesses that are have been around a while to understand why purpose is important. And how do you help them do that in yeah, finding that so, purpose? Okay, so that's so that's good. I I just recently did a video on that and okay um, on the benefits of understanding that your core purpose, your why, and there are four components that I I use to help these startups. One is their vision, the mission, the values, and obviously the what I call the solution or the painkiller because you got to be able to solve a pain or a problem that's out there. But your mission and vision and your values are extremely deep. They are what I call the long-term strategic components of a business. And so over the past eight to nine years, I've studied companies that have been purpose-driven and those that haven't. And the ones that are purpose-driven, and not only that, statistics show this. The companies that are purpose-driven tend to be the most competitive, the most profitable. Their employees love them and their customers are loyal even when they mess up, right? <laughs> So the the um, the results of a purpose driven uh, business um, from a statistical perspective is very good. Now, from an internal perspective, it helps the founders who uh, base their their decisions and their strategy and on their goals on purpose. It helps them stay aligned and stay the course. Plus. It helps them not run around with, uh, I, I guess, uh, trying to make decisions based on guesswork. What yes. what do we think? Uh, you know, it, it's because they have these the foundational items. So I call the the those four components I mentioned as your foundational items for your business. 20, 30, 40 years later, when you are uh, making decisions for a business for someone else's that has been brought in. Um, you you know that your decisions are based on the values, what the company values, right? And that your customers should experience those things. Your employees should experience those things. Your partners should experience, your partners and partnerships should experience those values, right? Your, your mission is your why. Why are you about this? People need to understand why you're doing this. And that drives uh, a lot of the direction and guides the, the, the movement of the business and then the vision which is the long term what how you envision a change world helps you set a a a course where <clears throat> everyone that understands that vision and and sees it knows exactly that point mm -hmm. of success right and so right. everyone is and you know there's many different ways to get to that vision right and get to that point of success but you know exactly what it looks like. And so uh, it's very, very critical to have that because if you don't, and the last company, corporate company I worked for, I mean, the guy was very purpose-driven. I mean, his the development of his business, the core of it was purpose-driven, but he, he lost sight of his vision and his why. And so every six months he was changing direction. He was changing so many things and I felt for him. And here's the funny part. I loved work. It was a chaotic, crazy company, <laughs> but I loved working there because right. there was purpose behind it. <clears throat> Even though he had lost some of that and he lost those those foundational components, it was still very, very purposeful at, at the core. And, and unfortunately, it just continued. And he, the company is still in existence, but it shrunk probably uh, to a third of what it was. You know, one of the things you you've talked about, and I, I there's many of the listeners of this podcast and and people that are interested in some of the 
the tidbits and the insights that are coming from these conversations. Uh, specifically, for those who are aspiring to either jumpstart their business because they've just started a, a new business, or those that are looking to begin uh, a new business idea. And I know that with the success rate of start of new businesses, you and I both know, I believe it's 90% of businesses that are going to fail. Yeah. But yet and still, you've talked about the quantitative evidence of purpose-driven businesses. And if you are speaking to someone that is looking to start their business and they're thinking about marketing, they're thinking about you know gaining capital uh, to, to fund their business, to bring their dreams to fruition. But here you are speaking about purpose, your why. Why is it important for someone at that level and no matter what they're doing that they need to understand this? And I, I guess I want you to sell these folks <laughs> on the reason why it's important to start with that first, because it's essential for your success. So I can give, let me give you one statistic that, that will help. Okay. So Forbes published a, a survey that was done and, and I can always get you the link. And it was a much larger company that had done this survey, 600,000 people worldwide, 600,000, not a small survey, pretty large survey. And uh, it showed that 91%, 91%, and all my, the times I speak, I said, hey, if you forget everything I, I, I say in regards mm -hmm. to purpose, remember this 91%. And so 91% of consumers and customers will move from company A to company B. 91%, 600,000 people were surveyed. But 91% of customers will move from company A to company B, even if company B and A have similar pricing, similar features, and similar branding, right? And so they will move from company A to company B. That's 91% because company B has a very clear, defined purpose and mm -hmm. mission. And so why is that important? Because at the end of the day, and so I used to do sales. I was a technology business developer, so I used to launch new products. And that's why actually in the incubator accelerator space right now with startups uh, in the tech space, both software and hardware for many, many years. Um, and at the end of the day, we are human beings, right? And I think we have lost sight. We think business is about, it's something that is has nothing to do with human emotions. But when, you, when a company is presenting its purpose, its why, what it does, very quickly, it draws in that other human being and those other human beings. Um, and it brings them in and it creates trust. It brings that wall down and it creates a quick trust and a, uh, and, and a, and a partnership there, relationship um, with, with you or with that business and your customers. And so if you don't understand your purpose, if you don't understand your why, I'm curious what you're, you're communicating to your customers. And so a lot of companies, in fact, the majority of companies, what they do is like, okay, we sell on price. And that's the thing that we used to try and do in sales is sell on price. Oh, okay. We can't because we can't go low enough. Well, then sell on branding, you know, uh, right. sell on features. Right. And I remember talking to one of our development groups and they launched a product and I'm I'm getting it ready. And I brought the team together. We all met down in Florida and we're, and I'm training them and I'm like, you know, we're having a hard time with this product. I says, well, why did you build it? Oh, well, because it's faster and da, 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 and it has all these great things. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Who did you build it for? And they went and they gave me the same scenario. Well, it's, it's faster, it's smaller, it's less expensive. I'm like, you don't have a human being in mind. You didn't, you did not develop this thing with a clear purpose and with a human being in mind. And so this is why it's not selling. And, and unfortunately they spent, probably a couple million dollars in development and changing and changing and changing and, and eventually failed. And so in order to be successful, um, understanding your why, and, and I teach this to startups, it can even be used in developing your product, right? And even with certain mm -hmm. types of products, right. I have them implement mm -hmm. their mission or their vision in there because those things help you set courses and goals, right? In how you do things and how your company moves and the decision that makes events you go to <clears throat> events you host how you speak right who you align yourself with 
what decisions you make, even in the product development, because you need to ensure if these are the things, my foundational components, is that fingerprint of those foundational components in everything I do and say and build. And build, absolutely. You know, you talked about cascading the elements of why throughout your entire uh of course, uh, product development process, but also in the reason why you exist. I, I agree with you. I think that unless you want to be one of those businesses that meanders meaning, meaninglessly <laughs> and, and just, I would call them a wanderer. But until you instill yeah. and implement purpose, then you will have intent and design uh, specifically on why you do what you do for whom when and where on the things that matters most. So I, I, I think for anyone that is listening to this, this, this chop it up session, as I can just articulate here, the things you just talked about, I also believe are portable and transport are, are, are portable and transferable to your personal life as well as your business life. But that being as it may, I, I want to talk to you about things you spoke about purpose and I believe that purpose is a great enabler. And you mm -hmm. just talked about the statistics, the Forbes article, uh, how it can differentiate you. But I think there's another enabler and differentiator that you have passion for, and, and that's technology. Uh, why should a company embrace technology across its entire value proposition to achieve its its objectives? Ooh, okay. That's That's... That's a good question. So I'll, I'll handle that carefully. Why? Because there's one fear I have. The introduction of new technology a lot of times creates new problems, right? And that's my always my fear when, you know, people are coming up with great new tech ideas. Now, the reason why I like, I like tech is because it can solve problems for people. It can help things be a little bit more efficient where you're able to have uh, a better uh, lifestyle in the sense of being being have more time with family and the things that are important in a person's life. Uh, by no means do I think that you know technology should take over a person's life and remove the human component out of it. But I think in in many cases it can solve some of our our problems, and that's where I I, I see technology's value. And so. Um, and here's here's a challenging thing I'm going to say, which you know not right. Really well, agree let's, with, let's, be, let's our, be provocative. Let's our our <laughs> our our reason on this earth is to live and build relationships and help each other and serve. Period. And so it's not necessarily to amass a lot of wealth and possessions and and you know great trips and all of that. Now, some of those things aren't too bad, but you know that's not at the end of the day. Our, 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 in my opinion, that's my opinion, is our purpose on this life. And so um, technology could be utilized in many, many ways and should be utilized in many ways for efficiency in anything you're doing. And so um, I don't use paper a lot, right? I use, I use computers, I use tablets, and, and I do a lot of Bible reading, just so you know, so I have books and books stacked up from previous notes of years, because I've been doing it for about 30, 40 years, and I got all these notebooks, and then I moved to a tablet, and people go, well, Wes, it's not, it's digital, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, but now I got all my notes, and right. I, my wife pulled some notes out the other day from mm -hmm. our garage, and and I'm going through them, they're really exciting, but now I got them on a tablet, and I utilize mm -hmm. them in that way, and there's so much there at my fingertips, and so that's how I view technology, I think it could be very, very valuable, and can be used um, to help you be efficient and so that, you know, you save time and you use that time for most, the most important things in your life. Yeah, I, I you know, technology today from AI to, uh, I would call it to all of the things that are in, in involved in businesses that not only uh, anticipate but predict, uh, I, I do believe that embracing technology, to your point, has to have a balance yeah, and and not, uh, as you would say, ignore the human element. But I do believe that technology is a great enabler. Mm. Uh, it's just dependent on how it's deployed. Yeah. Uh, and if you deploy it with that intent 
to the things you've talked about to be more efficient, to aggregate dis disparate uh, course uh, networks, to increase productivity, probably to even better help you more or less deliver your value proposition to the end user. Or in the example you used earlier about your community in Nigeria, about mm -hmm. how technology is permeating the community. Um, that's, to me, a good model of enablement, yeah. which I want to segue to something. And, and you are sure. not only someone like myself who spent time in the corporate community, but also you decided to become an entrepreneur. But I think that take that beyond an entrepreneur because uh, you spoke about the fact of your purpose and that is not amassing things, but sharing, yeah. of course, your talent, your treasures and your time. You are now uh, embarking upon this, I call it platform, this gateway called the nomadic network. And when someone hears nomad, they think of a wanderer yeah. who has no purpose, but more or less aimlessly Mm. going from here to there without direction. But I don't think that's what you're going to be doing with this nomadic network. So mm. share more about that information. I'm really excited about it. Yeah, so I'm I'm going to be honest. I've, I shared a lot of this with uh, my lovely wife, who is <laughs> the one that brings a lot of um, my crazy thoughts into a perspective. And so, yeah, the, the nomad is... is um, is, is one that people, it's typically a community of people that move from place to place rather than settling permanently in one location, right? So you could think of them moving around from place to place. And, and yes, my goal is for us to take technology and not, and life sciences. So I've, Cubile's on the life science, biotech, med tech, and then Headway is tech. But we don't want technology and life science innovation to remain in one place. We want it to go from place to place. Mm. And so also nomadic cultures have existed obviously through history, yes. through the world. Um, and they're, they're typically societies in search of resources. Right. Um, and so it's not just wandering aimlessly as much as they're in search of resources like water, pasture, hunting grounds, and they're associated, nomads are uh, associated with adaptability to changing environmental conditions and a reliance on mobility for survival. So you think about this. And so here's something really, really crazy as my wife and I are talking about this <laughs> about a month ago. I'm ready for crazy. <laughs> 10 years ago, and my it's still my vision, my vision for Headway. This is my vision statement. Because um, we... we in. We believe in uh, developing products through the eyes of the entrepreneur. Sorry, entrepreneurs through the eyes of their communities develop products that support their needs based on the community's social, cultural, economic, and political ecosystems. So those four things are very key. So when I look at a company that is starting a new technology or a new medical device or whatever. And I says, listen, look at this from a global perspective. But when you do that, consider the communities that have this need, but you need to look, take into account their social. Is it something socially acceptable? Does it address and fit within their culture? Does it work and ab abide to the political and the economical ecosystem, the political from the government side, the economical, can they afford it? Now, you you take companies that are, hey, my market is just here in this state or in this country, right? And and it can solve an incredible need in for a billion more people. But now they sit back and they go, okay, we're not going to stay here. We're going to wonder, okay, right? But we're going to wonder with purpose, mm -hmm. and we're going to see that, oh wow, mm -hmm. there's five other continents or 50 other countries that could utilize our solution. But now we take into account those four things, the adaptability. Will our product be adaptable to their needs? And so this, this really hit me about eight, nine years ago. I was part of a, 
a group because I'm an engineer, uh, engineer without borders. And I was on a, it's a volunteer team. And we were looking at putting in um, cooking gas somewhere in, in India. And I was talking to the lead uh, person of the project. And she's from India and she, she visited there and she came back and she says, Wes, this is really nice. But the people don't cook in their homes. They'd rather have running water in their homes and the cooking gas go to another home that's uh, uh, another uh, structure outside the house. And we talked about many situations like that where we Western culture goes and they build something in a foreign land and they go and they leave and it's never used. And they spend, you know, tens of to hundreds of thousands of dollars. And that's not really innovation. And, and that because of who I am with purpose, that bothers me. And so uh, the Nomad, the Nomad Network, as we are launching, is to um, do this very thing where our goal is to, to find nomadic innovators right. <laughs> in Africa, Correct. in South America, in Australia, in Asia, in Europe, in the U.S., because there, there are tons of nomadic innovators here that would love to get their products in other countries, but don't know how, don't know who to connect with. And, and this network is going to have all parties, but the thing is they do have to be purpose-driven. So we're gonna, we have, we have a plan to ensure that they're purpose-driven. And if they're not, we're gonna help them change their mind shift so that they're not only successful, but that they also address and make the impact they set out to make. Well, this no, this nomadic network that you are embarking upon, I think, is is not just a, a wonderful platform of engagement and community, but it is a gateway that will connect, as you said, beyond. It has no borders uh, globally, and I'm looking forward to to great things from you, Wes, and and and, and as you build this community. Well, we're near the end of our podcast, and I just have a question to ask you, sure. and I'd like for you to share. If you can give one lesson or one particular insight for someone that is looking to begin a business, what would that be based on your experience that they wow. can, that you could distill just one, one, one simple insight. Okay. Okay. So I work with and have worked with hundreds of startups. Yes. The number one thing I tell them is find out what your blind spots are. Mm -hmm. The reason why 80% of these companies fail, these startups, is because the majority of the founders don't know their blind spots. And if they've heard of them, they have not acknowledged them and they have not dealt with them. And so a blind spot is typically, and, and I do this with founders all the time, either your, your significant other, your family members, right. or really close friends that say, hey, you know, you always do this and you're typically, no, I don't. You don't understand me. Nah. <laughs> That's right. And, and typically these are blind spots cause you to make decisions based on something emotional that's going on and you always misinterpret or misdiagnose the situation and your blind spot steps in and you make a bad decision hmm. so i've studied a lot of founders that have risen to the top and then they've sunk because they did not acknowledge their their blind spot i would say you know steve jobs was a perfect example when he got fired and then, you know, he came back, was much more humbler right? and he, he, he did really well, but I've seen, you know, one of the, the founders of, um, of uh, Uber, same thing. Right. And these, if you can figure out your blind spots, acknowledge them and then find someone that is very close to you that can say, Oh, your blind spots kicking in now. Be careful. It That's will one. probably reduce <laughs> your potential <laughs> of failure by 50%. I, I agree with you, brother. I, you know, one of the things to also leverage what you just said, I, I try to share with anyone that I coach executive, from an executive perspective of businesses regarding that blind spot. We all have a shadow side. Mm -hmm. I asked them to basically implement and develop a personal board of directors. Mm -hmm. And as you've talked about someone or a network that will help you see things that you cannot see and give you a different perspective. But that's a heck of a insight and a tidbit. Brother Wes, how do people get in contact with you? Because there will be people, folks reaching out to you. Let us know. How did sure. they get in contact with you? Sure. Well, you can go to our website, which is headwayidealabs.io, or you can find me on LinkedIn, which is uh, under Wesley OKK. 
And Headway is spelled H-E-A-D-W-A-Y or Cubio, C-U-B-I-O. Um, and that's probably the best way to reach out to me. Well, I also want to just share this book, uh, Lessons from Our Mothers and Fathers. Uh, Mr. OKK has a chapter in here that he's graciously added to my book, and it's called The Power of Faith and Purpose. And he talks about his dad, who has just turned 100. So let's yeah. celebrate Mr. OKK, <laughs> your father, for a centennial, 100-year birthday. That's fantastic, brother. Thank you. Thank you. He was an entrepreneur, one of the first in Nigeria after its its independence in 1960, and he retired in 92. My goodness gracious, yeah, man. Yeah, that was God's grace, definitely. Listen, God, God bless you, brother. I appreciate you. you. Uh, happy to be associated with you. And this nomadic network, folks, look for it, but also remember to help yourself by making sure that you instill a process to prevent you from understanding your blind spots. Take good care. Much success. Happy New Year to you as well. Thank you, Cleo. Thank you. You're welcome. If you want to keep the conversation going with Conversations with Cleo and hear more wonderful stories about ordinary people doing extraordinary things, then go to coffeewithcleo.com. That's coffeewithcleo.com to purchase any of my books. Again, these stories are built around the people that I'm bringing to you on my podcast from around the globe. But also, every purchase of my book goes to scholarships for underserved and financially challenged students who are pursuing a college education. So your purchase will help them turn their dreams into reality. Again, that's coffeewithcleo.com. Thanks so much. All the best, and I wish you good.